Good evening, tennis fans, and welcome back to the Slice Tennis News. Novak Djokovic has won his fifth Paris Masters. Insane. Defeats De Denis Shapovalov, the Canadian boy, in the finals. And now we move into the World Tour Finals, where the question has been posed again by Djokovic. Is he going to take over Nadal, especially with Nadal pulling out of Paris with an injury? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the World Tour Finals and a little bit about the next-gen finals in this episode of the slice. Welcome to the slice. Welcome to the slice. Welcome to the slice. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Thank you for tuning in. And it's been a couple days since Paris ended, but Djokovic lifted his fifth trophy at the Masters there. Uh, he seems to always do really well at the end of the season on the Asian swing and indoors now. He's you wouldn't call him an indoor court specialist, but he's definitely lethal on the indoor court. Perfect conditions for his game to come out and be amazing. Uh, he dealt with the biggest challenge in this tournament for him was Sitsipas, and he dealt with him very thoroughly, very decisively, just absolutely destroyed him. Um, and he just looked super solid all tournament long, almost looked kind of subdued. Like in his celebration, even winning the tournament, he just looks like insanely locked in. I think he's really going hard to try and get back this number one spot that he lost to Rafael Nadal, who got injured in the Paris Masters and obviously pulled out before his semifinal match against Denis Shapovalov, then not allowing him to play him or potentially Djokovic in the final, which would have been a great showdown. So he lost some points or potential points there. And going into the World Tour Finals, the debate, because a couple weeks ago it was looking like pretty clear that jo that Nadal was going to end the year world number one. Now it's not so clear because he is ahead, ahead of Djokovic by about 640 points. But So if Djokovic won the World Tour Finals, he'd get 1,500 points. And if Nadal didn't make it out of the round robin, I think that would give him enough space for Djokovic to pop back up ahead of Nadal going forward and ending the year. So obviously a lot is at stake between... Um, Djokovic and Nadal at this year end world number or at the year end world tour finals, which by the way, the groups have come out and they are absolutely stacked. I think it's ba you can see the two groups here. It's basically the top, the big three and the best five players of the future. I think I'm going to be coming out with a video soon called the best 10 players in the next 10 years. It's going to kind of just give you who I think is going to be the top 10 for the next long time. Like who's the, who are the best players of the future? These five guys will obviously be in it. So I think it's really cool that we don't have any kind of wild cards or jokers in this World Tour Finals. Like I've always thought of this, not to drag on them too hard, but guys like Burdich, guys like Monfils, guys like like Kenny Shikori, like they're, they're there, but they're not in that level. I think every player here, like obviously the big three, nothing needs to be said about how great they are. But the, but the next five, uh, those five young guys are there for a seriously good reason because they've been the best five other players other than those three of the year. And they're all young and they all have like great futures ahead of them. So it's going to be great. In the one group, we have Nadal, Medvedev, um, Zverev, and Tsitsipas. So it's Nadal with three young guys who are all tall, love to rally. Uh, I'd say out of those three guys, I think Tsitsipas poses the most threat for Nadal, maybe even... Like, they're all dangerous, obviously, like super dangerous, especially with Zverev playing better now. Sitsipas hasn't been playing as good as of late as, say, Medvedev has, but Nadal's handled Medvedev the last two times they've played. Uh, but Sitsipas has a little bit more power and I think potential to hurt Nadal in that sense. So that's going to be an interesting group because of the way uh, that it, the, those three big hitters are with Nadal, and Nadal technically historically has been hurt by big hitters more. It's also just going to be a question of him coming in with his abdominal strain, which is the problem that he cited as why he had to pull out of Paris. So this week is really going to be taken to see how Nadal can recuperate and be ready for the World Tour Finals because if he's not, he's probably going to lose that number one ranking to Djokovic, who is in a group with Roger Federer, Dominic Team, and Matteo Berrettini. So another tough group. Obviously, Djokovic and Federer in there is brutal. For each other, it's tough matches for Djokovic and Federer there, but it's also tough for team. And then Berrettini, I think, has got the brunt of the toughness because teams uh, had a lot more success on the tour than Berrettini. But Berrettini definitely deserves to be in this last eight. Denis Shapovalov did him a big favor, but beating Monfils in Paris, as we all know. 
But Berrettini was able to sneak into this and put himself in the realm of a very limited company with uh, the, like the three t- greatest tennis players of all time and the best players in the next gen. So that's going to be an inter- interesting group to see as well. I think three players could come out of there. Dominic team could pull out somehow and beat Federer and Djokovic. Uh, but you're going to expect that Federer and Djokovic are going to come in to the semifinal round uh, to play the number one and two seeds. On the other side, which that is more up in the air of of who could come out of there. I think it could be a wild card on Nadal's group there. So that's a quick look at the World Tour Finals. Uh, Yeah, Djokovic did really well winning Paris. Got him like a really needed added boost to his points total from last year because he made only the finals last year. Uh, And then Nadal, unfortunately, has that injury coming in. So we're going to see how he can recuperate and get ready for it. Do you guys think Nadal will play if he's only like 85, 90%? If his abdominals are still, do you think he's going to play? I think he should because a lot's on the line to go into the break of the tennis year uh, as a number one is a big deal. Um, So we're going to see about that. The next gen finals are on right now. The players that are involved in this year's next gen uh, are Alex Diemenauer, Francis Tiafo, Hugo Hember, Casper Rudd, Miomir Chekmanovic, Mikhail Emer. I'm saying I'm probably just brutalizing some of these names. Alejandro Davidovich, Fokina, and Yannick Sinner. All those guys are there for a good reason. We got guys like Alex or um, Felix Auger Ali seem not there due to injury, uh, but a couple of those guys are household names: Alex Diemenauer and Francis Tiafo who are under 21 apparently and are going to be playing there and probably doing pretty well. But all these guys have serious potential. Uh, guys I like, I really like Hugo Humber. He made the fourth round of Wimbledon, if you don't, if you can remember. which is pretty crazy. He played some good tennis against Djokovic. Uh, and this Yannick Sinner guy has been cr- creating some waves. He's played Warenka twice in the last few weeks. Um, and he's just played some good tennis. He's beat guys like Monfils, and, uh, or he had a really good run versus Monfils. Sorry, he beat Golfan. Um, so lots of talent there. It's going to be fun to watch if you're watching. But I'm really excited for the World Tour Finals. The big boys are going to be playing. It's going to be sick. Let me know your predictions for who wins that. I'm not letting you know mine yet, but that'll be coming. Stay tuned. Subscribe. If you want to support the Slice, get your own. It's Bagel Time Mug. Send it as a gift at Christmas. It's nice. Even if you don't follow the Slice, a tennis fan would love it. And uh, thanks for the support. The link for all that is below. We'll see you very soon.